Hi, and welcome to Dimensioning Guidelines. For this activity, students will be able to create annotated working drawings. So let's say you have a brilliant million dollar idea. Now what? What do you do with your idea? It's in your head. Someone needs to manufacture it for you, but how do you show them exactly what pr to produce? Do you describe it in words? What would be the best way to uh, describe your product? Maybe with a drawing, maybe with a annotated working drawing or a dimensioned drawing. Uh, and if you're looking at these, especially the iPhone on the bottom left, you might look like, wow, that looks really complicated. But if you understand the dimensioning guidelines, it's like understanding a language. And it's time to learn the ABCs of dimensioning, the very basics on what rules you need to follow. It's a common set of principles that everybody knows who are in the dimensioning world. And if you don't follow these rules, it's like writing your own language or speaking in gibberish. So you have to make sure you use this common language. So here are some of the rules. Number one, dimension should reflect the actual size of the object, not the scaled size. So you don't have to break out a ruler. The dimension measured on the drawing is three quarters of an inch, but the actual dimension of the part is two inches. Therefore, show two inches on the drawing. So some people like measure what's written on their page, what their drawing is. And they're like, oh, this drawing is this big. But we don't care what's on your page, like tell us what the actual part should be. Number two, include overall dimensions in the three principal directions, width, height, and depth. This is a good place to start. Overall dimensions should be placed the greatest distance away from the object so that intermediate dimensions can nest closer to the object. So I know I said it's a good place to start, but don't make them the closest you can. See how close that is? Then you're forced to make your other dimensions cross over there. It should be further away, and then you nest the smaller dimensions within that. Number three, include all dimensions necessary to produce or inspect the part. This is really like the point of making this drawing uh, dimension. You have to include all the dimensions necessary. Dimensions should be placed so that it is not necessary to calculate or scale a dimension. So you shouldn't have to look at it and be like, how, why is that, you know, how, how wide is that? Okay, so you have to include everything. But that doesn't mean you over include things. Do not include unnecessary dimensions. Dimensions should not be duplicated or the same information given in two different ways. See how busy this drawing looks? It, it would be like um, in an email, writing a professional email to somebody and having a run-on sentence with all this extra information and you keep on repeating yourself, kind of like I do sometimes. So you just want it to be super efficient. See how there's all these double dimensions here? So this depth is actually shown twice. So you don't have to show that depth twice. Once you show it, you know what it is. And this height is shown twice. All right, so you only need to show it once. This width is that width, so you don't need both. Do not include unnecessary dimensions. Do not include chain dimensions that add up to a given overall dimension. So this is kind of like in the same vein as that previous step, but it's one step further. So can you see the dimensions that are not actually needed? You don't actually have to include that 0 0.05 because if you know that the overall is two and then you know 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75, you could technically do some subtraction and get to that dimension if you need it. So provides the same information in two different ways. Same with this. If you know that the overall is one and you know one of those uh, dimensions is 0.5, you know the other one has to be 0.5. So it, the whole point is to make it as efficient and clean as possible with the fewest dimensions necessary to still be able to know all the dimensions in the shape. Dimensions should be attached to the view that best shows the contour of the feature to be dimensioned. So it just makes it easier if it's on the shape that shows the best contour. Normally that's the front view. A dimension should be attached to only one view. For example, extension lines should not connect two views. I see this very rarely, but I do see it every so often. It should look like that. 
Whenever possible, locate dimensions between adjacent views. I see this mistake all the time. All right, we set up our multi-view drawings with the glass box method so that when you place the dimensions in between the views, you can easily see between the front and the top or the front and the right side. Uh, but that only works if the dimensions are where they should be in between those two views. If they're on the outside, like on the like it just was, you don't get that added benefit and it's harder to read your drawing. Avoid dimensioning to hidden lines. So on the right side there, that's no good. If necessary, that's when you can draw the dimensions outside. So technically it's like, oh, Mr. Nangle, I thought you said don't put it over here because that's not in between adjacent views. That rule can be um, broken sometimes if necessary, okay? Normally we want in between adjacent views and then this is in between the adjacent view here, so that's good. You don't want things outside, you don't want things over here if you can avoid it. But like they just said, the only way to do that would be to dimension to this hidden line because that's this over here. So you don't want to dimension to a hidden line ever if you could avoid it. It's better if it's, at least it's to an object line so you can kind of see it clearly. It's all about what makes it clear to see. Do not place dimensions on the object unless it is absolutely necessary. This looks so messy to me. That's not good at all. Do not do that. It's gotta be outside. Okay, that's much better. Do not cross a dimension line. So remember, these are the dimension lines with another dimension line or an extension line. So over here, this dimension line is being crossed by this extension line. So that's no good. Sometimes you will have to cross an extension line with another extension line. It's not really in this drawing, but let's see if I could point it out later. Crossing extension lines is okay if necessary. They were saying don't make an extension line through a dimension line. Avoid crossing dimension or extension lines with leader lines. So this is kind of a similar thing. All right, that looks messy. That looks nice. Leader lines point towards the center of the feature and should not occur horizontally or vertically. This is messy. This is messy, especially because this looks like it could, is that an object line? I don't really know what's happening. The standard is to have your leader lines at an angle like that. Dimension numbers should be centered between arrowheads like this, except when using stacked dimensions and then the numbers should be staggered. Look how messy that looks. So it, even though they're in between, directly in the middle, that's good, but it's not good because that makes it look messy. So if you need to, you can go like that, okay? And then if there's no room in between, sometimes you'll see it off to the side like that, but that's only if there's no room to put your uh, dimension. In general, a circle is dimensioned by its diameter and an arc by its radius. So here's your circle, diameter, here's your arc, radius. Holes should be located and sized in the view that shows the feature as a circle. So here's the hole, and then they're dimensioning to these hidden lines. So first of all, you don't want to dimension to a hidden line. Second of all, you want to dimension to the hole where it looks like a circle, and it looks like a circle on the front view. Holes are located by their center lines, which may be extended and used as extension lines. So it should look like this. And that's about it. Uh, the only other thing I'll say is if you need to rewatch this video at any time to refresh your memory on the rules, that's fine. There's also a Word document called Dimensioning Guidelines that's in the pink resource folder. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching and have a great day.